and I'll crush you like a paper cup. <laughs> All right, it's time for Crush and Bus. These are going to be the players that we like. Maybe it's here or two or more above ECR for our crush. And then a bus is going to be the opposite way. The players that are getting hyped up, that you should be locked in. Maybe they're wide receiver twos. Maybe they're RB twos. Maybe they're RB ones, but wide receiver ones. And we're saying, no, 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 no. Look out this week. Maybe even think about a different option. So first, we're going to start with the crush side. And I want to go to Adam first. So Adam, this week, who are people... Too low on, in your opinion, that you have a crush on for this matchup. Look, this is a guy who uh, I, I maybe wasn't as high as I thought I was early on the offseason. You know, after talking to you guys, uh, I, I had to reconsider, uh, kind of move off of some of my biases. Now, coming into week one, looking at the situation, you know, looking at all I have in front of me, um, man, I'm really excited for Tony Pollard this week. I, I, he has become kind of late in the season. Uh, one of my very favorite, you know, if I went, did not go running back early. He's been a guy who I've been, you know, of those late round dart throws that I, I really liked this season. Um, so I'm excited for him. And this season, in, or this week rather, in particular, we're going against a Bears defense who, listen, they are much improved over the first part of last year. Let's give the Chicago Bears a lot of credit in that, Okay. A lot of that improvement was against the pass. Let's be super clear about that. The overall defense improved, but the major improvements were against the pass. The pass rush had a night and day difference. The secondary had a night and day difference. The interior defensive line is still the weak point on this defense. Like, 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 let's just be clear about that. I'm. This was last season over the course of the season. And again, they got better down the stretch. But over the course of the season, they were the 30th ranked uh, rush defense on PFF. Uh, and look, I think they're going to improve from that. Um, but come on. Like what we're valuing Tony Pollard as, uh, as, as an RB3 type of guy. I, I, I'm i sorry. Like even I like Ty J Spears. I think he's an incredibly talented and incredibly explosive back. Um, but let's be real with ourselves. Uh, if, if Ty J Spears takes this backfield, it's going to be the second half of the season. Week one? Are you kidding me? Tony Pollard's going to be the guy. Like, let, let's be real about that. And let's be real about week one. Look, I think the Chicago Bears defense, I think they're going to continue to improve. Um, but they're not going to be an elite rush defense unit week one. Um, so with, with that, those two things in mind, Tony Pollard is someone who I could easily see um, being a late to mid RB2 uh, this upcoming uh, week. Yeah, us as a group, this shows a group. We've been the minority, but we have been on Tony Pollard from the get-go. And follow the money. Tony Pollard was paid to lead this backfield. Tommy Spears is going to have his role. I'm not saying he's going to dissipate. And this is totally Tony Pollard from like, you know, last year where he was a featured bell cow. But Adam, I'm with you. He is the lead guy in this backfield. He is a year removed from his injury, which did take away some of his explosiveness that we're used to seeing. Yeah, people are going to be surprised by Tony Pollard. Chris, who's your big crush in week one? Yeah, I'm going to go with Khalil Shakir versus Arizona. I think this Arizona defense is not good. I think Buffalo has every reason to try to go out and put as many points on the board as possible. I think they're going to try to. Because the one thing they're going to be able to do it against? <laughs> Pretty much. I think this is where they're going to shoot their load, possibly, or overreact to things. You know, <laughs> Buffalo is going to be awesome, but it's a game where I think Khalil Shakir is going to be able to get tons of targets. He's going to get moved around. This Arizona secondary has very little to stop him. They have no pass rush at all. So I think this is going to be a, a fun game in a sense for the Buffalo Bills. Khalil Shakir is a guy that I think is going to go out there and just run easily into 100 yards and probably score a touchdown as well. It's a guy that I think is criminally undervalued this week. I love Khalil Shakir. Yeah, I think we are going to see Shakir, not Curtis Samuel, is going to be ahead in that pecking order of target distribution for the Buffalo Bills. Can't wait for that one. Chase, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to stick around in that same game there and the same side of the field. I'm going to go with James Cook there from the Buffalo Bills. Listen, the Cardinals were one of the worst teams in the league against opposing running backs last season. Sharp football has them as the league's worst front seven against the, you know, so against the run, they're not going to be good at all. They lost BJ Oshalari. That didn't help anything on that front. Uh, even if Ray Davis is the goal line back for Buffalo, 
the Cardinals are bad enough. Cook could score through the air. He can score from farther out on the ground. I'm not worried necessarily about Davis taking goal line carries because I still think James Cook is going to get his in this game. I expect him to eat the rest of the time. Right now in half PPR, he's running back 13 ECR wise. I have him as a top 12 play this week. I really like James Cook this week against the Cardinals. Yeah, I'm just thinking about this. Like, I just think it's funny. All these people are talking about the Cardinals could be like a wild playoff team. And I'm like, look, I know offensively there's some things to get excited about. But listen to what we're saying here. The defense is ripe for the picking for everybody. They're going to have to win every game 38 to 35. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it ain't yeah. gonna happen. I'm here to tell you that right now. All right, so my guy, I talked about him a little bit earlier, and I didn't want to get into him because I had to get into him here, and that's my man, Scary Terry McLaurin. I got him ranked at wide receiver 20. Lock him in as a must play wide receiver, too. While meanwhile, ECR's got him all the way back sitting there at wide receiver 28. Look, last year, Tampa Bay gave up the ninth most fantasy points to the wide receivers, and now you have Zion McCollum replacing Carlton Davis. Who? Yeah, thank you. Like Exactly. The, look, you're going to be able to pass on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all you want to this year. And in fact, PFF has this wide receiver cornerback matchup grade at a 66.4, which is well above average for wide receivers. Now, on top of it, you look at Terry McLaurin, who I, I know he hasn't played a game yet, but Jane Daniels, the best quarterback Terry McLaurin has ever had at his disposal, period. <laughs> Number one, had a 23% target share last season. I expect that to get a boost. Jahan Dawson got shipped off. We don't know between, what, Diami Brown, Alameed Skias, <laughs> Luke McCaffrey, who's you know a later-round rookie. Who, who the hell else is catching the ball? All right, it's going to be Jaden Daniels getting locked in to Scary Terry, who can actually throw the deep ball. Finally, Terry McLaurin can open it up down the field. I'm locking him in as a wide receiver, too. You must play this week against Tampa Bay. Now, with that, on the flip side here, we got busts. Who do we want to stay away from? That maybe everybody else is starting to play in their lineups or at least think about a different option. Adam, back to you. What do you got? I got, and look, it pains me to say it because this is a player who I love and a a guy who, look, in Dynasty, I I love this guy. But Brandon Ayuk, week one, redraft. I'm sorry. He's in ECR, latest ECR, half-point PPR. He's wide receiver 25, so uh, highest end wide receiver three, but flirting with wide receiver two. I'm sorry. I have him as a low-end wide receiver two. It's someone who, like, look, if I am – particularly stacked at wide receiver i would consider pushing down um again i love him but the matchup is not one that i necessarily want to go after uh of the starting wide receivers for the 49ers uh devo certainly plays at 10 percent higher in the slot uh uh, iuk is out wide 50 or 75 percent of the time uh iuk he's gonna be the perimeter wide receiver that means Sauce Gardner uh, is going to be seeing a lot of Brandon Ayuk. And, oh, I'm sorry. We have two practices from Brandon Ayuk <laughs> this season. <laughs> this season, we have two practices. Like, But he has a left tackle. Look, he has a left tackle, and that's fantastic. And he has Christian McCaffrey. But, look, I, that's just not where I want to be attacking the Jets in general. I think, in general, this would be a poor matchup for him. And that's... You know, ignoring, once again, he has to go against Sauce Gardner. And look, I, I'm sure he's been practicing up against some great, you know, XFL corners on that press release. <laughs> he's not ready for Sauce Gardner in press week one. He's not ready for those hand fights. I'm sorry. He's just not. Like, that's just the reality. He hasn't been getting warm-ups against real NFL cornerbacks like that. Like, <laughs> that's the reality of the situation. He, he may even be in great shape, but... It's super technical out there and against a really, really good cornerback on the outside who's been iron sharpening iron going against Garrett Wilson all offseason long. I'm sorry. I love Ayuk. I hope by a month from now I'm not worried about this, but week one, I absolutely am. Adam, Chris, that, ra- that rant gave you a run for your money, Chris. That was. Well, he's on it. He should have he should off season observations. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam I'll, Adam, I'll do you one better. I got Brandon Ayuk down at wide receiver 30 for this week. So, like, he's purely like a yeah. flex play if you don't have a better option, in my opinion. So, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, Chris, you got a surprising one for this week. 
He is a player that I like and I've been advocating for most of the summer because people have been down on him. But I think this is a guy that I do not trust week one. That's DeAndre Swift. Take it on a Tennessee defense, I think it's improved. But one thing I'm just going to highlight is they don't necessarily improve versus a run because they've been fantastic versus a run. Tennessee is a team that's going to be able to dominate line of scrimmage. Jonathan Simmons, uh, they brought in the kid sweat this year. They have good linebackers they've added. I think this team's going to have a really hard time. Chicago's going to have a really hard time trying to run the ball, establish the run, especially if they're, you know, Shane Waldron doesn't realize that you can't run the ball up the middle, which he tried to do a lot in Seattle. He's got to realize them to run off tackle. So this is not a good matchup for Tennessee. I'm sorry, for DeAndre Swift versus Tennessee. I like DeAndre Swift going for the rest of the season, just not week one. Okay, okay. Yeah, Tennessee, the, the run defense is real. I'm, I'm with you on that one. The run defense is going to be real this year. They got some big bodies up front. Chase, ooh, spicy. He's got a, Chase has got a spicy one for his bus this week. All right, so now listen. I realize that if you drafted Jameer Gibbs, as you drafted him as your running back one, in all likelihood, unless you went crazy running back, running back, round one and round two and got lucky. But Jameer Gibbs is a guy I think you need to temper your expectations for in this opening week, and here's why. Now, the Ram, this Rams defense that he's statement. going against here, that is a bold statement, but on now on this Rams defense that he's going to face on Sunday night, they may be absolutely abysmal this, this year. They, they're, they were not great last year. They're not going to be good this year. But I worry because of that, the Lions, with their high-powered offense, uh, holy cow, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad observation there. I worry that the Lions might jump out to a big big enough lead that they might be in clock killer mode for a pretty good portion of this game. And if that's the case, I think it limits Gibbs upside. Now, we know that, no, no, he can run between the tackles and everything. What they're going to do is they're going to run the ball more often with Montgomery in those kinds of situations. They're going to use Gibbs more as a playmaker. And I so I don't think that that favors Gibbs upside in this game you're still playing him. You drafted him to play him. You're not going to not play him, but you need to temper your expectations. So you may need to look elsewhere in your lineup to help make up the points that I don't think you're going to get from him at that running back one level. He's not a top 10 play for me this week. So, you know, like I said, you're going to start him. You should start him, temper your expectations, look elsewhere in your lineup to make up some of those points there. I mean, Montgomery's going to be a thorn in Jameer Gibbs' side, especially inside the five. They're, we know they're a thorn in each other's side. I mean, if either one of them misses any time, the other one skyrockets to the moon. But yeah, I, yeah. But the Rams' defense stinks. And this is a game that I expect to be very, very high scoring. So I don't know. That's a little spicy for me as far as Jameer Gibbs not having the ceiling in that one. But okay, Chase, making the argument there. For me, my bust this week is DJ Moore. Okay, ECR's got him locked in as wide receiver 19. So they're telling you he's a locked in top 20 must play wide receiver. And frankly, I got him at wide receiver 26. Is he most likely making my lineup at wide receiver 26? Yes, but it might be more as a flex play. It might be more of a question mark, depending upon what options I have available to me. Talking about the Titans defense, Chris, because you talked about DeAndre Swift. This is not the same Titans defense of last year here, people. They signed LeJarius Sneed. They have Denard Wilson, who's now the new defensive coordinator after he was the Ravens defensive backs coach last year. A defensive back unit, by the way, that outside of Kyle Hamilton, vastly overachieved. All right, that is not that talented of a group. And they were able to go lights out against some of the best offenses in the NFL the entire season. I'm excited for him as a defensive coordinator. I even like a woozie who they brought on the other side to be able to make this system. He's not a bad backside corner in this one either. Tennessee Titans are not going to be a defense that are ripe for the picking. I don't think people realize this. And we still need to see... The target distribution. Is DJ Moore going to be the first read more times not in that Chicago offense? Yes, absolutely. Is he going to be the only read like he was last year for Justin Fields? No, no, he's not going to be. You're going to have Keenan Allen. You're going to have Roma Dunes. You're going to have DeAndre Shep coming out of the backfield. You're going to have Cole Komet. And frankly, to start off this season, I'm not too crazy about Caleb Williams this particular week because we still haven't seen him really get into a rhythm where he's dropping back two steps, three steps, and firing off the ball. He's still doing a lot more improvisation. I think that's going to be tough against a defense that has talent like this one has a system that Denara Wilson is going to be running. It's going to be a little confusing. I think he's going to be under pressure quite often in this one. I don't expect a great showing from the Chicago offense in general. I expect this to be a very low scoring game. In fact, they even have the under for this one and it's at 45 and a half. 
So I'm just capping my ceiling on DJ Moore this week. He's a wide receiver three for me. With that, we close off our first week of Operation Domination. Before we get out of here, Adam had this great suggestion. It is week one. So let's go ahead and just go around the room. Rapid fire. Pick your Super Bowl teams and winner for the year. Chase, go. Kansas City versus Detroit, finally. But Kansas City makes the three-peat. Ooh, Adam. Uh, unfortunately, I had the same thought as San Francisco and Detroit. <laughs> or uh, Detroit and the Chiefs, sorry. <laughs> Chris, what do you got? I said offseason, if you give Patrick Mahomes, Marquise Brown, like the Chiefs are going to win it all. But everybody's been picking Kansas City. So I'm going to just switch it up and I'm going to go Baltimore versus the Eagles. Ooh, Baltimore versus. Um, guys, the best roster in football is San Francisco. San Francisco going back <laughs> to the Super Bowl. Just FYI, just so everybody knows. But they are not going to be facing the Kansas City Chiefs. They are going to be facing the Houston Texans. I love what they did in the offseason. That defense is going to be better than people realize. They have the trio of weapons and Joe Mixon and CJ Stroud going in the second year. I have Texans in San Francisco. And because it's not Patrick Mahomes, San Francisco finally wins. Okay, and on that note, the internet is forever, Dan. That's out there. Goodbye. (laughs) See you guys next week. Make sure you follow Operation Domination on the Fantasy Football Advice Network on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Sports Vice platform because it's 24-7 fantasy football community. Let's go, baby. We'll see you next week.